You can have a seat. So there's four ways to give. You can give online. You can give by texting. You can give by mailing it into the P.O. box. And you can give in the box right there in the back. Welcome online community. It's great to have you with us here today. I pray that the Holy Spirit will stir you, touch you, open up your heart and your mind, and that you'll feel Jesus right there with you as I'm preaching the gospel today. And for everyone here in person, the same thing. May the Lord stir in your heart today as you hear the Word of God may it inspire you, challenge you, encourage you, and strengthen you. Are you all ready? We are in a series on the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God has been increasing His activity in our midst. Now, when you hear testimonies of this person being touched and that person being touched, you're like, well, I haven't experienced anything. Don't, don't be like that. Don't do that. Don't think there's something wrong with you. or Because it's like popcorn. It's in a bag, right? You put it in the microwave. They don't all pop at the same time. But you leave it in there long enough, it, most seeds pop. Some don't. I don't know what to say about that. That illustration just <laughs> fell apart right there. But... Most seeds pop. You just, you just got to wait your turn. Just stay hungry. Stay in. Stay pressing. We had a brother come in our church. He was an evangelical, meaning that term and its connotation in this current day means that he believes the gospel uh, and all of its, all of its uh, tenets about Jesus being born of a virgin and being sinless and being the Son of God and the Trinity. And he came the first time. He's coming the second time. Heaven's real. Hell's real. The Word of God's the Word of God. All of that. However, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirits, miracles, signs, wonders, all that, he was taught that passed away when the last apostle died, which you cannot find in the Bible, by the way. That just came out of the mind of man, and they started teaching it for whatever reason, and it has crippled and devastated the body of Christ from healing people, setting people free, casting out devils, and seeing multitudes come to Christ in one sermon like Peter on the day of Pentecost. One small sermon. Bam! The Spirit of God hits all these Jews. 3,000 got saved in one sermon. It says right before Peter preached his first sermon, what Jesus said to his own disciples who had the Holy Spirit to be born again. He had already walked through the wall. Jesus already rose from the dead, walks through the door without opening it. He walks through the door and says, Hello, I'm back. Receive the Holy Spirit. Breathes on them. John chapter 20. Breathes on them. They receive the Holy Spirit. Then he says, now don't go anywhere until you receive the power from on high. They didn't know what that meant, but they obeyed. Well, there were 500 at first, but by the time the Holy Spirit came like a wind through that upper room, there was only 120 left. There's, there's, a, there's the lesson right there. Stain power. And then it says, the Spirit of God came upon them. Then it says, they all went outside into the main um, uh, metroplex where there was, uh, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of Jews that came from the ten cities from around Jerusalem for the greatest uh, feast, feast day of the year, the, day, the, the, the Feast of Pentecost, which is called the ingathering, which is why we call this the gathering place. The ingathering. And God waited until the highest Jewish day of the, the ingathering to pour out his spirit so 3,000 souls were saved and there was an ingathering of souls. So he used the harvest ingathering as a metaphor for the ingathering of human beings into the kingdom of God. Amen. And it says right before Peter preached that first sermon, it says, and Peter, being filled with the Holy Spirit, said, then he prophesied. This is the outpouring that Joel talked about a thousand years ago. It's happening right now, today. And then some well-meaning brothers and sisters come along in our day and age, and they preach, well, that was just for back then, but not today. And I don't say this to speak ill of my brothers and sisters, many who could out-preach me any day of the week on many different topics. But on this one, they just flat out got it wrong. And it has damaged and hurt and crippled the body of Christ for centuries. Why would God pour out His Spirit on His church and 
bam, signs, miracles, and wonders. Demons being cast out of people who are harassed and possessed and oppressed and, and tormented. And people who are sick and diseased. People who are suffering. And God pours out a spirit and people are being set free. Why would he ever stop that? Has suffering ended in the earth? Anybody? Has suffering gone? Has sickness and disease gone? Has demon possession gone? Why would he stop that? And some say, well, because he did that simply to launch the church. You can't find that in the Bible anywhere. You can't find a scripture that says, well, the power of God was poured out until now, because now that, and then you've got to make stuff up. Yeah. Now that we have the Bibles complete, well, they didn't know this was going to be a Bible when Paul was writing the letters to the churches. He wasn't writing, and he, nowhere does he say, one day these letters I'm writing will become what we know as the Bible, and when that happens, then the gifts of the Spirit won't be needed anymore because we have the Bible. Somebody had to come up with that nonsense. And the thing that is so devastating is that we have believed it. So there are people today, Christians, if you speak in tongues, some of you may be online listening, maybe some of you here have been taught this, speaking in tongues are told that's of the devil. And I'm telling you, that is incredibly dangerous. I'm warning you with, with care for your soul that you do not say that. What if it's the Holy Spirit and you're saying that? God forbid. God forbid. Not in this church. What was so marvelous about the outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost? Why was that so amazing? Listen, it wasn't just because of the effects of the outpouring of the Spirit, where 3,000 got saved, people got healed, signs, miracles, and wonders. Listen. Catch this. All of that was happening for thousands of years before the day of Pentecost. Did you know that? Have you ever heard of the ten plagues that hit Egypt? Moses? Those miracles? Signs and wonders? The Holy Spirit didn't show up on the day of Pentecost. The Bible says in Genesis 1-1, God created the heavens and the earth, and the, and the earth was without form and void, and the, say it out loud, the Spirit of God was hovering upon the face of the earth. God said, light be, and the Holy Spirit, whoosh. The Holy Spirit is the, ex, the, the, um, the, 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 say it. The executive arm of God. I had to ask the lawyer to say that for me. <laughs> the executive arm of God. Father, God. The Son, Holy Spirit, the executor of God's will, the Holy Spirit. Do you want more of God in your life? Do you want more of His love in your heart? That bitter, resentful, unforgiving, depressing, jealous, greedy, lustful heart that every one of us have to live with. Our hearts are a mix of love and hate and, and prejudice and grace and joy and depression. I mean, we all deal with our human hearts. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says God sheds abroad His, abroad His love in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, Romans 5.5. 5. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, say it, in the Holy Spirit. So for those that would say, and again I say this, not arrogantly, um, not judgmentally, it, it, it's, I feel on this particular topic, I feel, I think, like Jesus did, when the Pharisees, the leaders of the religious world at that time, 
we're blocking people from knowing the love and the heart of the Father. Those were the only people he was angry at. They were misrepresenting the Father and blocking them from knowing his Father's heart. He called sweet Jesus, called them vipers, and whitewashed tombs with dead men's bones inside. Hypocrites. Jesus said this out loud in public in front of people. I think, brothers and sisters, that teach against the fullness of the Holy Spirit for today's church mean well. I think they've just been taught that, so that's what they teach. But you can't find it in here. Do you need more love in your life? Do you need more joy in your life? Do you need more faith in your life? Do you need more hope in your life? These are these these are all these aren't rhetorical questions, and they're all going to be yes. We'll just keep going. Do you do you need more deliverance in your life? Do you need more power in your life? Do you need a greater revelation of Jesus in your life? Do you need to know the love of God more in your life? Do you need to lay hands on people that you love that are sick and see them healed in your life? All right, do you need to love the Word of God more in your life? I was, I was on a prayer call Wednesday night, and um, Linda Marr, who's here in the house, she said, so cute. She, I've never heard this before. I usually have a Bible snack before I go to bed, she said. She said, I am so hungry for God right now. I read two whole books of the Bible. It's because we're in a series on the Holy Spirit, and we are all praying, right? 30 for 30, you're praying 30 minutes a day every day, right? Yes, you are. Go ahead and lie in church and go like this, all right? Please stop, don't stop praying 30 minutes a day for, for ever. Because I do not want the water level of the Holy Spirit's activity to decrease in our church, and it will if we don't pray. Prayer is what releases the Holy Spirit in our church and in our lives and in your soul. So you have some unanswered prayer. Deal with it. And keep praying. The Apostle Paul's in prison, unjustly, locked up in chains. And he says, the Apostle Paul says, I know that my deliverance will come through your prayers and the supply of the Holy Spirit. What was I saying? <laughs> Come on. It, huh? It was an important, I was headed somewhere. It was really important. Huh? Yeah, we need that. The fullness of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Oh, do you want, yeah, right. Thank you, Christian. Just flat out, do you want more of all the things that I'm talking about? Then you need more of the Holy Spirit's activity in your life, not less. Do you know, do you know that the devil hasn't decreased his activity? Why would God strip the church of the Holy Spirit's power? I mean, it's, I've said this before in this series. I just, I'll just say it again because it's so frustrating and so true. and We've we got to turn this thing around. Why is it that fortune tellers, mediums, uh, uh, palm readers, you know, Ouija boards, all this demonic activity seems to be like, okay, If it's on the dark side, oh, well, yeah, of course. That's all the devil stuff. Oh, it's kind of intriguing, too. Do you know that calling fortune tellers is a multi-billion dollar annual industry? Because in the human heart, we want to know what's next. What does my future hold? TV shows, movies, multi-billion dollar industry. So don't tell me you don't want to know about the supernatural. People will go to the dark side to find that out. But as soon as we prophesy in church, oh, oh. Bring it, Bring it. How did we lose what belongs to us? How did we lose our inheritance? 
How does the dark side get to own the supernatural? That's utter foolishness. I remember one brother said to me, he went to a palm reader at like some kind of an outdoor affair, and uh, she says, um, can, you know, do you want to, can I read your palm? He said, sure, and then I'll read yours. So she reads his palm, and he said, let me have yours. Uh, repent. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did. I'll tell you your future. Give me your palm. <laughs> repent from your sins. So that you may be saved. Look, the Holy Spirit wasn't just poured out on the day of Pentecost. Oh, by the way, the middle schoolers. Did the middle schoolers stay in? Yes. That was supposed to be said. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm going to say something to you. Good. The middle schoolers, the high schoolers, I want you to understand something this morning. I really want you to uh, pay attention to me. Back there. This, what I'm talking about right now, is not for adults only. There is no junior Holy Spirit. There's none of this, well, the kids play games back there until they become adults, and then they get introduced to the Holy Spirit. God forbid. So I'm going to tell you something about from the Old Testament, before the day of Pentecost, and the Old Testament, Samuel, who ended up being a prophet that was so powerful that God said he did not let one word that exited Samuel's mouth fall to the ground, but it came to pass. Now, personally, I would not want to have that power (laughs) because there would be some people going all sorts of different directions. (laughs) Could you imagine? But he heard the audible voice of God three times. God called him by name. Do you know how old he was when he heard the audible voice of God? Twelve. Wow. Christian. Nice. Twelve years old. What's that, sixth grade? Seventh grade? Well, it depends. Somewhere around there, depending on where you're at. In my case, it was grade 12. 12 years old. Okay. What about David? This is one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. We should probably open the Bible today. Uh, I'm gonna, I want you to look at David, chapter, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13. It says in uh, 1 Samuel 16, 13, I love this verse. It's so important. When we think about David and how he slayed Goliath and how he wrote all the psalms that we sing in church and had the wisdom to lead Israel, the greatest king that Israel ever had. But it says this in verse 13, 1 Samuel. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers and, say it out loud, the Spirit of of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. That was the key to David being so powerful. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. Do you know how old he was when this happened? Close. 17. He was a teenager. He was 17 years old. You say, yeah, but that was David. Don't do that to yourself. Well, that was Samuel. No, don't do that to yourself. Don't read the Bible, see God use people mightily, and then build statues out of them and say, oh, don't do that. They were just average people, just like you and I. David was the youngest of eight. They didn't even consider him. When the prophet came to uh, uh, Jesse's house, he said, do you have sons? Yeah. And he brings seven of his sons in front of the prophet. Surely he's going to choose my oldest one because we judge by the side of the eyes. 
We see somebody, oh, they're handsome, oh, they're tall, oh, they're mighty, they're powerful, oh, they're rich, oh, you know, whatever they are. That we think, oh, they, oh, God can really use that person. No, so often God chooses the marginalized, the left out, the young, the small. He does it on purpose to confound the wise. And so Jesse didn't even consider his youngest son, but God did. Jesse, the pro- Samuel, the prophet, Samuel, remember the 12-year-old that heard the audible voice of God now as a grown man, says, God has rejected all of your sons. Don't you have any more? Oh, yeah, well, I got a teenager. See? You see that, teenagers? Jesse, well, I have a teenager, but I mean, he's out, you know, feeding the sheep. And the prophet says, call him in here. I'm not leaving. I'm not going to sit down and eat until he comes in. He walks in and he says, surely the Lord's anointed. Bam! And it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon David from that day forward. And now you know the rest of the story. Teenagers, don't you need more of God's comfort, encouragement, affirmation, hope, peace, power? The same spirit that was upon David is for you too. This was the point of the day of Pentecost. You ready for it? It wasn't the first time the Holy Spirit was poured out on somebody. Throughout the Old Testament, you see the Holy Spirit on Samson, who was 30 years old. And the Spirit of the Lord comes upon him. And all of a sudden, it said they had bound him with ropes, and he was all bound up. It says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And all of a sudden, the ropes just like became like little, uh, what it said, like twine. He's one, and just broke it. The Spirit of the Lord came on Samson over and over and over. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Ezekiel when he was 20 years old. And he had visions. And he preached under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The whole book of Ezekiel was miracles and visions and preaching and prophecy. Because he said, the Spirit of the Lord came upon me. The Spirit of the Lord caught me up. The Spirit of the Lord filled me. All throughout the Old Testament. So what was the significance, and this is my main point today, what was the significance of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost if he had already been poured out so many times in the Old Testament? The 70 elders of Moses, right? Moses' uh, father-in-law Jethro says, what you're doing is not good. You're doing all the work yourself. You need to raise up some leadership. So he chooses 70 elders, And it says, when he called them all together, the Spirit of the Lord came upon all 70 elders, and they all prophesied already, way before the day of Pentecost. And there were two guys that were outside the camp. They didn't come to the church meeting, and they were prophesying, and they were prophesying out in the parking lot. And Joshua got upset. He said, Moses, these two guys, they didn't come into the meeting. They're prophesying outside the camp. And Moses said, oh, that all the Lord's people would prophesy. That was the point of Pentecost. In the Old Testament, the prophet only, the prophets, the priests, and the kings, and a few select others had the Holy Spirit come upon them to do miracles, signs, and wonders, lead, wisdom, power, Speak to the people for God. So the Holy Spirit's been doing all of the... The only two gifts that are brand new to the world that happened the day of Pentecost was what? Tongues Tongues and interpretation of tongues. That's it. All the other gifts have been in play ever since the very beginning of creation. I told you I'm going old time Pentecostal this morning. Betsy and then the legal pad. It's my comfort zone. What was the point? In the Old Testament, all the way up to the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was for a select few. But what Jesus hungered for, deeply desired and got, 
was for everyone, everyone, children, teenagers, 20, 30-somethings, middle-aged, seniors. Hey, seniors, Moses didn't even get started till he was 80. Come on, Ron. We went, to, we went to India together. And Stephanie, who oversees our global missions and does the announcements sometimes, Jerry's wife, she was our team leader and she had each person every morning do the devotionals. So one morning it was Ron's turn. Now Ron's wife, Kahana, had gone on to heaven. And so Ron decided, well, I guess I'm going to get busy. And so he went on his first missions trip with us. And Ron came into the room. We all sat in a circle. It was Ron's turn. And Ron said, I've been up all night crying over everyone. And I have a verse for each one of you. And every verse Ron gave to an individual was their life verse. Including me. Now, for those of you who don't know what a life verse is, it's like the Lord speaks one verse to you out of the Bible someday along the, your journey, and it like just, you own it. It's like, that's God speaking to me. It becomes your life verse, man. It's like, that's the one I hang my hat on every day of my life. And Ron spoke the life verse for every single person. So you know what we started calling him after that missions trip? Ronnie Baba. <laughs> Ronnie Baba. Because the Spirit of the Lord came upon him in India. If you didn't catch the correlation there. So what was the difference? Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 2. The difference is, as Peter, we're going to start in, uh, actually we're going to start in, um, okay. Chris, can you easily back it up? If we uh, start in chapter 2, verse 12. You got it? So this is on the day of Pentecost. Jesus rose from the dead. They're all hiding in the upper room, the, the disciples, because they're in fear. The mighty wind comes into the room. They all get filled with the Holy Spirit. They go out into the main street. They begin to speak in tongues. And everybody from the ten cities were shocked because they hear them speaking in their own language. But they knew that these people uh, did not know their languages. They're like, how is this possible? So they accused them, they accused them of being drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. People will accuse you of being a whack job of being weird, being demon-possessed, being deceived, being out of your mind if you speak in tongues, if you prophesy, if you lay hands on the sick to see that they recover. To say demons exist, and then you're going to cast them out. Well, who cares? People need to get set free. God needs to be glorified. People need to be helped, saved, delivered. Medication and counseling can't do it all. Education can't do it all. Wealth can't do it all. Willpower can't do it all. We need the Holy Spirit to help us. So, says verse 12, they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? Others mocking said, they're full of new wine. And Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For those, these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only uh, nine o'clock in the morning, third hour of the day. But this is what Joel was spoken by Joel the prophet. This is long ago. And it shall come to pass. Everybody say, it shall come to pass. And the last day, says God, which we are in now, that I will pour out of my spirit on how much? Well, who? All. All flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out of my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. The point of Pentecost was now everybody gets the Holy Spirit. Everybody. Teachers, carpenters, moms, dads, sons, daughters, financial advisors, administrators, custodians, homeless, kings, queens, black, white, yellow, green, male, female, doesn't matter. Everybody has access to the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's all stand. The worst thing that we can do in this day and age is to do reenact what was done in the Old Testament. Only Pastor John gets the power of the Holy Spirit because he's a professional clergy. He's our pastor. He's the man. And of course, Hope, his wife, because she's the pastor's wife. And of course, Mark, he can be a prophet. And Dennis and April, of course, because they go to Africa and... Stop that. You need the fullness of the Holy Spirit to be a mom. To have wisdom for your children. You need the Holy Spirit to be able to forgive those who have abused you and hurt you. And you're bound up and crippled and paralyzed because of it. You need the Holy Spirit to honor your mom and dad when they don't deserve it. You need the Holy Spirit to have wisdom as a teacher in your classroom. Do you know that Daniel was 17 years old when he was taken captive. You guys know who Daniel is? He was a Jew in Jerusalem. This is world history. The Babylonian army came in, ransacked Jerusalem, took all the Jews to Babylon, and they made him slaves. And Daniel, a 17-year-old boy, they took him because he was royalty. He was part of the royal family. So he was educated, intelligent, useful, They took him to train him in the ways of Babylon, which they did. He knew all the Babylonian belief systems. He was taught witchcraft and sorcery and Babylonian languages and their culture and their music and everything. He was trained in the Babylonian ways. But the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. In fact, all of the sorcerers and the witches in Babylon that counseled the king when the king had a dream and nobody could interpret it, they said, there is a young man, they said this, whom the Spirit of God rests upon, that interprets dreams. Dreams and interpretation of dreams. Old Testament, Holy Spirit. That 17-year-old boy, filled with the Holy Spirit, for, as a teenager, counseled over 70 years, five kings who ruled the world in their reign. Teenager. Because he had the Holy Spirit. Come on, just just slip your hands, church. Come on. Don't, Don't believe the lies of the devil that you're not qualified. Don't believe the lies of the devil the Holy Spirit's not for you. Jesus said, All who thirst come to me And out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. It says, this he spoke of the Holy Spirit, whom those believing would receive. Lord, we believe. Holy Spirit, we love you in this church. You online, join us. Come on, you need the Holy Spirit right there where you are. Holy Spirit, we love you in this church. We want you to flow like water in this place. Blow like wind among us burn like fire in our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit. Increase your water level of activity among us. We need your power.
We need your presence. We need Jesus. Spirit's primary ministry is to reveal Jesus to us. To reveal Jesus to you. Jesus said when the Spirit of truth comes, He will show you everything about me. The church of Ephesus was a powerful church doing all sorts of wonderful works, but Jesus showed up to them and said, Unless you get this thing right, you're doing all these good works, but unless you get this thing right, you're doing the Operation Christmas Child thing, you're feeding the poor, you're going to do the Thanksgiving food drive, and all. you're doing great stuff. But there's one thing you're missing, and if you don't get it right, I'm going to have to close down the church. He actually said that to them. What was the one thing? 
you don't love me like you used to. Jesus has called us into a love relationship with him. I heard one teenager say, yeah, I grew, I, was, I grew up in that. And I said, well, it's not a that, it's a him. You may have grown up in church and you never knew Jesus. You can't exhaust Jesus. He's eternal, son of God. And the Holy Spirit's primary ministry is to reveal him to us every day, deeper and deeper, more, so that we worship him like he's worthy of being worshiped. Gary said something that the Lord spoke to him this morning. Uh, Gary, what was that that he said to you? Yeah, well, step into faith, step into the gifts. But the other one was about walking with Jesus. So the early disciples, their whole desire was to be with Jesus. They left their families. They left their businesses. They left. They got kicked out of the synagogue. They didn't care. They just wanted to be with Jesus. That's the whole point is Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is the one who opens up our hearts and our eyes to Jesus. So the chorus of this song, the, uh, the bridge, is to magnify the sun. So let's, let's get back into this song. And let's ask the Holy Spirit to cause us to fall in love with Jesus again. Dennis, you have a word? Okay. Dennis has a word. This, is... um, this morning in prayer, I talked about when I was a young Christian, and um, I kind of half backslid. I wasn't doing well. And I went to the church service and all my friends were dancing and worshiping. But my hands were like this. And the Lord said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I, you know, I'm not doing well. I haven't been doing well. And he says, yeah. And so I told him, I said, I don't feel worthy to worship you. And the Lord asked me a prophetic question. When were you ever worthy? He said, I'm worthy. And this morning, maybe some of you don't feel worthy. It's not about you. It's about him. Amen. Amen. Come on. So let's, Come let's, on. Let's, let's, let's worship the one who is worthy. Yeah. Get our minds off ourselves. On to come the on, world. let's go. Let's sing this. Oh, come magnify the sun. Savior of the world, the hope for everyone. Oh, come, magnify the sun, Savior of the world, the hope for everyone. Oh, come, magnify the sun. the 
Uh, getting back to your first love. As I received a prophetic word a, a few weeks ago coming back from Montana, I had, I had, had visited one of my in-laws' uh, churches over there, and um, I just wanted to, to see how their, their uh, guest services program worked with filling out one of those cards. And I was like, all right, let's see how good these guys are. <laughs> and so I just put a prayer request down in there, just some of the things I was struggling with. The next day, a gentleman called me and said, Hey, brother, I think I got a word for you, so give me a call back. (laughs) And he's like, Hey, your love tank's empty. I was like, What do you mean? And he's like, You've been thinking that ministry or just doing the things will help you love Jesus more, and like that's God's approval for your life. But ministry and doing things for God doing the things comes from loving Jesus. It starts with loving him first. And from that love, his love compels us. That's why we do what we do. It just, I did not even know that that's what I needed to hear until I heard it. Like that was what my real issue was. It was because I had fallen out of my first love. And I was immediately reminded of Revelations 2, where it says, Jesus says to the church, he's like, I see the work that you're doing. It's great. It's awesome. And you haven't, you haven't bowed down. You haven't done all these things or, or given up your integrity. But I have this one thing against you. He said, you've forsaken your first love. But we can't fall in love with Jesus without the help of the Holy Spirit. So... sing spirit fall one more time and as we're singing just just be praying in your mind praying in your heart that Lord reawaken that love for the Lord Jesus again can we do that spirit Mighty wind.
Even the miracles, the signs, the wonders, the healings all point to Jesus. That's why they're called signs. Very important. We're going to, I'm going to end the service here in a minute, but I'm going to call the prayer teams up in a minute. And if you want uh, hands laid on you, prophecy, maybe a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, maybe your physical body healed, maybe you'll get your prayer language and be able to speak in other tongues, maybe you'll have visions of the Lord, whatever, I don't know. But all of these things are signs that point to Jesus. It says in the book of Acts that it was proven that Jesus was the, was the Son of God by the signs and miracles and wonders that He did. These signs point to Jesus. Here's where we can go grossly wrong as a charismatic church if we're not careful. We can begin following signs rather than signs following us. It's not about the signs, it's about Jesus. Otherwise, we get into idolatry. So when you have an encounter of the Holy Spirit, when a miracle happens in your life, one, it's out of compassion, the Lord's compassion for you, because He knows you're suffering and He wants to touch you. But that should draw you nearer to Jesus. That's the ultimate point. So let's not worship signs around here. Let's allow the signs to help us worship Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right. So I'm going to ask the prayer teams to come up and Dennis and April and Gary and Kathy and others that are uh, prayers and prophets in the house. Come on up here and let's, let's get busy. If you need a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in your life, if you maybe want to operate in the gifts of the Spirit and the power of God, you used to, I, I, there, are, there are people have said, yeah, I used to speak in tongues a lot, but I haven't done it in a long time. Well, come get a Come get a booster. See what I did there? See what I did there? I told the other, I, somebody that, I, I pray every day a lot and probably 50% of the times in other tongues. Now, you, you, don't, you don't have to speak in other tongues. Nobody's going to force you to. You can still be a powerful Christian without that, but I'm just saying, it's such a help. We had a manifestation just the other week. We had uh, a gal who came up here she said to us, she told me last week, she said, I don't know how to pray. Like, I just don't know how. She goes, so I came up, this is two Sundays ago, and last Sunday she told me about it. I came up here, and I remember her. She came up, and she was just wailing. Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable. It's a little like, oh, that's kind of not a little, she's wailing up here. It's like, yeah. Do we just never want that so that we aren't embarrassed? Or that it's not a little bit Strange, or would it rather the Holy Spirit touch somebody in the way they need to be touched? We don't want weird for weird's sake. We'll, try, we'll shut down stuff that we don't think is the Holy Spirit. But if it's the Holy Spirit, don't touch it. And so last week she told me, she goes, I came up for prayer. I didn't know what I was coming up for. I just came up because I wanted more. And she said, all of a sudden it was like God began praying through me. And I said, do you know that's a scripture? Romans 8, 26. When we don't know what to pray for, the Holy Spirit will pray through us with groanings that cannot be articulated. That was happening. I'm not going to shut that down. Maybe you need a fresh touch. You come on up for prayer. You guys should start praying. You don't have to wait for me. If you've never given your life to Jesus before, that's the most important thing. You can't earn your way to heaven. It's a gift. And Jesus is the only way. Don't ever let anybody talk you out of that. If you want to know that you're going to heaven when you die, simply open your heart to Jesus. Receive Him right there or right here as your Savior. Say, Lord, I'm making you my Lord and Savior right now. I'm giving my life to you. Please forgive me my sins. He will do it right now, right where you're sitting, right where you're standing. And then after you do that, Ask Him for the Holy Spirit, and He will breathe upon you, and He will fill you with His Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen.
So if you want to be touched by the Lord in a significant way, welcome to come on up and be prayed for. The music is not going to get any louder than this. It's going to be very soft. So if you want a prayer, come on up. Let the prayer teams pray for you. You're welcome to slip out. You're welcome to stay. But let's play, stay in an atmosphere of prayer and worship in here. And let the Holy Spirit heal, save, and deliver. God bless you, family. God bless you, online community.